Well, welcome to our late night chess roundup. I must admit a lot of the BBC Two spend is going on this at the moment. We've got some cracking action from New York for you this evening. As well as expert analysis. And I'm joined here by Malcolm Payne, chess correspondent of The Telegraph, Yvanka Huska, the current British women's champion, and by Shah Jahan, I hope I've got that right, who's 10 years old and one of the most successful graduates of my chess correspondence course. Very <laughs> pleased to have him with us. Now, Yvanka, you are lucky enough to live in Norway. Yeah. Is there chess fever? What are they saying about their guy? Oh, the Norwegians are really proud of Magnus. You know, he's this chess superstar. He's on all the newspapers. There are two TV channels that cover this world event. And uh, yeah, I mean, in fact, in fact, they've moved it to the prime TV channel. And you've actually played him, haven't you? I, I lost and it was a tough match. I just played a, an opening which I studied, which was Nimzu Indian defense. Uh -huh. Is that a tricky one? Is that, what do you do in that? Yeah, it's a bit dynamic. Okay, good. So, Malcolm, um, how big a deal is this event tonight? Well, it's almost a throwback to the 1970s and 1990s when chess had a geopolitical edge to it. So, in 1972, when the American Bobby Fischer defeated Boris Spassky in Reykjavik, that was the Cold War. That was the embodiment of the Cold War. And there's absolutely dead silence in the hall. Spassky is pacing, he's nervous, and... Wait, here comes Fisher coming on the stage saying that he was caught in traffic. And uh, I think Spassky was visibly relieved. And also perhaps pained. Subsequently, there was a match between Kasparov and Karpov, many matches when it was almost perestroika against the old communism. And now we can see with uh, Vladimir Putin backing his boy, and in a sense, you know, rekindling some of the, of the ideals of the old uh, USSR, that actually the Russian government have a real interest in, in success in this match. Malcolm Payne recreates a mouth-watering move from match nine in the series. The build-up to a so-called diabolical answer by the Russian, which appeared to involve sacrificing his queen. Yovanka, it's early days, but do you notice anything about tonight's events yet? Black seems to be doing very well. He's expanded. Who's that? Black is Magnus Carlsen. Yeah. So uh, I'm a specialist on his body language. He's very comfortable. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> what do but, you make of his body language? Well, he's very comfortable. When he uh, he grimaces a lot, so uh, when he's uncomfortable, you'll see him gurning away. But uh, here, he's very comfortable. He's very in the zone. And if you can see on the black with the black pieces, he has a lot of space on the queen side. What sort of lines of attack would you be thinking about now? I would uh, think about my next move being bishop a6. I could continue with queen b6 and. Rook b7, maybe rook f b8, and just throw my heavy pieces on the queen side. Oh my god, g5. Unbelievable draw. draw. Beautiful. And we have a draw. Beautiful. We have a draw in the second game <laughs> of the tiebreak in the World Chess Champion. Well, I just hope you can get off to sleep after all that.